Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? The Saints drafted Spencer Rattler in round five. You know that by now. And of the entire draft hall, the pick that has gotten the most conversation has been the Spencer Rattler pick for a lot of obvious reasons. Uh, he's a quarterback. He's a guy that's kind of been in the public eye ever since he was the number one quarterback in the country coming out of high school. So for a lot of reasons. Um, I, I want to be very, very, very clear. Because I know there's people that are really optimistic about this pick. There's people that hated it. I saw all the reactions. It's very polarizing. I love this pick. I love the pick. I'm not telling you or predicting that Spencer Rattler is going to be an all-pro quarterback. I'm not even predicting Spencer Rattler is going to ever be a starter. That's not the point. The point is that I love the pick in round five. Look, Dennis Allen even said it after the draft. You know, like, they weren't necessarily targeting a quarterback in this draft. It wasn't a position that we felt like, man, we got to, man, we, ha we have to address this. And, and we felt like keeping those picks in the back end could be valuable to us, um, you know, and adding some, some more depth players potentially to our roster. And so kind of wanted to, you know, hold on to those. And yet, um, yeah, it wasn't easy to just, you know, hang on when you knew that name was kind of sitting there. So um, but sometimes the best move is to, you know, let the draft come to you instead of going and trying to make it happen. And that's what we did today. That's what they did. And by all accounts, there's this sort of unanimous agreement that the Saints getting Spencer Rattler in round five was insane value. Field Yates over at ESPN did a, a, a piece where he listed the top five picks of every round. Round one through seven, the five best picks in round one, five best picks in round two, so on. Spencer Rattler was among the five best picks that he listed in round five for various, very obvious reasons. Y'all, Spencer Rattler, when he was coming out of high school, was the number one quarterback in the country in 2019. He goes to Oklahoma. Going into the 2021 season, his third season in college, he was in mock drafts as the you know, the way too early mock drafts as the number one pick in the draft goes to show you how much can change but stay with me here that's his third year in college before his third year in college starts he's in way too early mock drafts as the number one pick of the draft during that 2021 season he loses his starting job to the guy that would eventually go on to be the number one pick in this draft in Caleb Williams we all know what happened. Spencer Rattler transfers to South Carolina. And Caleb Williams ends up going to Southern Cal, the two USC's on different coasts. And their results were very different. Williams won the Heisman. Williams was the number one pick in the draft. Rattler was humbled. You know, the thing I saw on Saturday that sold me on this value proposition... You ever watch the draft and you always see guys whenever you know they they it's the it's them with their family, right? And there's this wild celebration. They're they're surrounded by 50 people, you know, they're celebrating, they're high five and hugging, and you should. It's an amazing accomplishment, right? All your lifelong hard work and you hear your name called in the NFL draft. And people are celebrating, there's balloons and there's all kind of stuff, right? Everybody's fired up. You should and you should be. I'm not saying don't be fired up. Did you see? the video of Spencer Rattler being picked by the New Orleans Saints. He had gotten the call. He was just watching the television, and he knows his name is about to come up. And he's sitting on a couch, and his mom is sitting right next to him, and he's wearing a, a, a cap. And as soon as he hears his name called, he casually puts on a New Orleans Saints hat. He hugs his mom. He gets up. He hugs his family. It's all just about, man, about time. Time to go to work. Look at it. Look at his face. His face isn't one. It's not sell. It, he's not like bummed, but 
it's not the raucous, overjoyed thing. You say, well, he's bummed because he went in round five. The point is, there's a lot of different ways you can handle that. But this is going to sound very similar to the take I had about Jameis Winston three years ago. Was it four years now? Four years ago. When the Saints signed him. And every all anybody wanted to talk about were interceptions and crab legs. And the point I made to you then is Jameis is a guy that was so athletically gifted, he was always the first picked at recess. He was the best player on his high school team. He goes to Florida State. He wins a Heisman as a redshirt freshman, wins a national championship, was also on the baseball team, could have gone pro in baseball, was the number one pick in the NFL draft, like threw for 5,000 yards. He had never been athletically humbled. And then he was. And you can go one of two ways when that happens. And that's not just in athletics, that's in anything in life. When you've been humbled, you go one of two ways. You either resent it or you learn from it and grow from it. And Jameis very clearly, as an adult man who's now a husband and a father, grew from it. The unfortunate thing in New Orleans is you wonder if Devin White had and horse collar tackled him and he tore his ACL back in 2020, how much, or 21, excuse me, how much different might the, the Jameis experience in New Orleans have been? Don't know, we'll never know. But I look at Spencer Rattler's face and I see the same thing. Former number one prospect in the country who had gone to Oklahoma, was supposed to be the guy, was a projected number one draft pick, and his adversity came. And he went to South Carolina. And he even talked in his post-draft press conference about how the adversity that he has faced in his life has shaped him up into this point. You know, I think it helps me coming into this level. You know, being able to experience a little adversity uh, early on in my college career, I think that helps, you know, because as a quarterback, especially at this level, you're going to experience adversity if you want it or not. So I think having success, having adversity, that, that helps shape you as a player in person. And, you know, uh, I wouldn't change a thing about, about nothing throughout college. So I'm ready for the next step. I, I know I'm prepared. Wouldn't change a thing. Now, I don't know if I absolutely believe that. Of course, you'd rather win a national championship and a Heisman and all that sort of stuff. But you know, the the your your path, the road you take to whatever is your path in life, whether it's athletics or everyone can relate to this, right? Wherever you are in life, you can look back at your path and realize why things happened to, to lead you to where you are. I've heard a lot of people say, "Well, if he's so good, then why was he drafted in round five? Why did thirty-one other teams pass on him?" You know the answer to that. We all know the answer to that. That's not the point, because he had struggles. He had struggles in college. He lost his job. He went to US, he went to South Carolina. And there were times where he was the only good thing they had in that offense. But he still didn't pop. I mean, we could look at the Clemson game from this past year. He was sub 200 yards passing. You know, he struggled in the Georgia game. He, but he went off in other games too. So there were highs and there were lows. There was inconsistency. And that's the thing that isn't there. But you know what else is there? The arm talent, the physical ability that made him the number one prospect in the country coming out of high school. So you have tremendous upside there. The other thing, too, to keep in mind, y'all, only so many teams in a draft are going to take a quarterback. And six teams that needed a quarterback took that quarterback within the top 12 picks. So after the first 12 picks, you didn't have another quarterback come off the board until Rattler in round five. For what it's worth, he was the seventh quarterback. Last year, the first seven quarterbacks, there were three ones, a two, a three, and then three fours. So, like, there, was, there wasn't such a gigantic gap between quarterback picks. That was just sort of the, um, the oddity of this draft with it being so top-heavy with quarterbacks. I know there were people that talked about the high school documentary he did, you know, QB1, Beyond the Lights, and how maybe some teams, you know, reacted negatively to that. My point is, look, if you're going to react negatively to something someone did as a high schooler at, you know, in five, six years ago and can't look at the process they've taken throughout college – then you're negligent on your behalf. And I don't know if that mattered for anything. But ultimately, when it comes down to why I love it, I, I'm looking at the upside because you have a supremely physically gifted alpha at the most important position in team sports who has been humbled, who very clearly, by his words and by his actions, has something to prove, has a chip on his shoulder. And that can be dangerous when someone with that ability locks in and is right mentally and isn't caught up with all the expectations and being the first-round pick and the money and all the stuff. There's something else that's going to motivate Spencer Rattler right now, which I love. And then I look at just being a fifth-round pick. I went back and looked at every fifth-round pick that the New Orleans Saints have made since the year 2000. They made 23 of them. I would consider they hit on eight of the 23. That's about a 34% clip. You've had Carl Nix in the fifth round, and you've had Thomas Morstead in the fifth round. You had 
Jordan Howden in the fifth round last year, who looks like a pretty good pick so far. You also had Natrell Jamerson and Vinny Sinceri and Matt Tennant and Anomo Ojo and Demario Presley and Ronald Powell. Y'all, there's been a big pile of junk in round five for the New Orleans Saints over the last, since the aughts, since 2000. In all time, quite honestly. A fifth round pick is about a 30% proposition. So you're going to tell me when usually, when we only hit, we meaning the NFL collectively, hits on 30% of your fifth round picks. And I got a guy who's a super talent, who's motivated, who's an alpha, most important position in sports. I'm getting him in round five when it's only a 30% proposition anyway. Okay. I, that's why I love the pick. I'm not projecting Spencer Rattler to be an all-pro. I'm not saying he's going to be Drew Brees and win a Super Bowl or anything of the sort. What I'm saying is, in round five, at the most important position in team sports, you get you get that guy? Yes. And maybe he becomes your Dak, your Cousins, your Purdy. Or maybe he's Gardner Minshew. Or, or Chase Daniel, a guy that holds, makes a career holding a clipboard. But is it worth the pick? You're darn right it's worth the pick. And the other thing I'll repeat right now that I said leading up to the draft, the New Orleans Saints have been in business for 57 years. And in 57 years, you've drafted a quarterback in round one once, Archie Manning. You've never drafted a quarterback in round two. And you've drafted a quarterback in round three once, Garrett Grayson. So in your entire history as a franchise, you've taken a quarterback in the top three rounds twice. Hell, the Bears went Trubisky, Fields, now Caleb Williams. All within the last 10 years. If what you're doing ain't working, do something different. You drafted Jake Hayner a year ago. You drafted Spencer Rattler this year. My point is, if you ain't going to go heavy at the top of the draft, then go with numbers. Make it a numbers game. Keep picking one every year until you hit. Do you realize in the history of the New Orleans Saints, this is only the third time ever they have taken a quarterback in consecutive drafts? They did. And I don't, are we even going to count Tommy Stevens? Because Tommy Stevens in 2020, Ian Book in 2021, and we know they weren't taking Stevens as a quarterback. They were taking him to play the Taysom role. And then 70, 71, and 72. They drafted a quarterback in each of those three years, and the middle one was Archie Manning. This is the third time ever that you've done it. So, yeah, play the, if you're not going to take a quarterback at the top of the draft, play the numbers game. That is why I love picking Spencer Rattler. And maybe you go to camp, and he ends up beating out Jake Hayner and beating out Nathan Peterman and becomes your backup to Derek Carr. And maybe he develops into a really good player. Maybe he's a career backup. Maybe he completely busts and gets cut in training camp this year. If he does, what have you lost? But if you hit, what have you potentially gained? That is why I love this pick. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.